Hallelujah. We give thanks to the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. Blessings to each and every one of you this morning. Beloved, God bless you, God. May his face shine upon you as they will give him all of your life. Hallelujah. All of your life, mind, heart, and soul. Hallelujah. We continue our journey this morning in the book of Acts, chapter 10, verse 20, 21, and 22. We are this morning. We see how the Lord God is leading and directing Peter, his servant, an apostle, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord, as he is about to bless a few people's life. So far, he has used him to be a blessing in the life of Anas now, and the name also for Dacus. And now God is about to use him to be a blessing in the life of Cornelius. So let's get into God's word and see where we are concerning this matter. Because you know earlier, the Lord God has to do with Peter concerning his own prejudice. And in, as children of God, we cannot have prejudice within our heart. God wants us to be just and to be fair to everyone. When he sent us, we must go without doubt but with faith. So here in verse 20, 21, it says, Arise, therefore God speaking to Peter. He said, Arise, therefore go down and go with them, doubting nothing. For I have sent them. So the Lord God is telling Peter to go down to these men and to go with them because he sent them. Verse 21, Then Peter went down to the men who had been sent to him from Cornelius and said, Yes, I am he whom you seek. For what reason have you come? Hallelujah. In verse 22, they said, Cornelius, the centurion, a just man, one who fears God and has good reputation among all the nation of the Jews, was divinely instructed by a holy angel for, to, to summon you to his house and to hear words from you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One of the most beautiful things in this life as children of God who seek his face and live by his word is to be used of God to minister to the lives of those whom he sent us to. To be not used of God is never a wise thing. You must always have to seek and find out why uh, why God is not using us because God uses every one of us who he has a relationship with, no matter what, because there is always someone that need to hear the word and always someone need to be healed or someone need to be blessed one way or the other. Here we see the Lord speaking to Peter and says to him, Arise, therefore go down and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. So the Lord commanded Peter to go. He won't have no doubt. You see, the last reason why the Lord ministered to him before, because the Lord had to minister to him ahead before these men come, because they are not Jews. And if without confirmation of God's word, or God testifying or let him know what is about to happen, he would have simply refused. Because these people were not were Gentiles. And the Jews does not interact with Gentiles or going to a Gentile's house. It's just by tradition and by law, that's the way they were. But when you're a child of God and you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you're not the Jew or Gentile, you're simply a child of God. And wherever he sent you, you should simply don't even resist. Simply go in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So here Peter, who be the Lord God, here in verse 21, said, Then Peter went down to the men who had been sent to him from Cornelius and said, Yes, I am the one whom you seek. For what reason have you come? Peter still got to find a way. <laughs> the Lord said, must go. And down in the Peter, yeah, yeah, I hear that, Lord. But I still got to ask, why? <laughs> why you come? Hallelujah. Just being human, I guess, you know. But it still shows the level <clears throat> of Peter's uh, prejudice. And, 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 you know, it's in his DNA. You know, these men are not Jews. So he simply still got to ask the question, for what reason do they come? <clears throat> I can hear a whole song that says, no spirit, don't be like doubtful Thomas. You know, but believe you me, beloved, we must have this relationship. One thing I notice here throughout this whole passage, uh, and, and as I go through it, is this, is that God never, God never sends someone to you, let's do this now, without him confirming it 
or let you know what to expect. You have to be careful of people when they come to you and say, God says. You got to be careful. Because if they come to you and say, God send me or God tell me to tell you this, and he doesn't like the Lord haven't told you about this, you need to tell them, please go. You need to. Because if you have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and the Lord God in such a way, and you know God's voice, and you know that you, <clears throat> he always talked to you, he never sent <clears throat> anyone your way without confirming with you and let you know <clears throat> at a time what to expect. <clears throat> so you're preparing <clears throat> them. Is that I give you a vision of them and then they show up? Or he tells you something and that person is confirmed by the person. That's the way God works. He never still says something to one side and doesn't to the other side. Peter, when he sent Peter to these people, or to, he always talked to these people, and, and he always confirmed it through Peter as well. So both sides know that, yes, this is of God. Confirmation, yes, this is of God. When there's no confirmation, it's not of God. Not of God. So be careful of people who come to you and say, God says, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So here in verse 21, saying that Peter went down to them and said, yes, I am he whom you seek for. For what reason have you come? So Peter only went down there only because the Lord God sent, says to him, sent, sent him down to them. In verse 22, and they said, Corn, Cornelius, the, ser the centurion, a just man, one who fears God and has a good reputation among all the nation of the Jews, was divinely instructed by a holy angel to summon you to his house and to hear words from you. One of these things, <laughs> as I see this, is this thing that lately of people talk about you know, you know, they were anointed, the uh, angels spoke to them, uh, you know, from this time of their life or that time of their life. It does not matter, okay? You, we have, you who have the Holy Spirit within you, okay? No matter whether an angel come or angel not, you, the Word of God got to be confirmed by the power of the Holy Spirit by God himself. So even though this angel minister came to Cornelius, it still has to be confirmed by God that he sent that angel and confirmed by his word. Be careful when anyone comes to you and tell you angels say, God speaks directly to his people. A person must always speak by way of the Holy Spirit and by confirmation of God's holy word. No angel take precedent of God unless the angel is sent by him and said that, make it be known that it's sent by him and it will always have to be confirmed by the word of God. No angel let anyone or come to anyone and say anything that is not in the word to be confirmed. Here, one of the things I, I love about this passage is to tell of why and who this man Cornelius is, his character. All his characteristics, may I say. You see, one of the things here that I noticed through the passage of Scripture, and I and you, we have to search our heart to find out truly if we do this, because God always blesses anyone who have one of this key virtue or characteristic of Cornelius. And the, the, what I look at here is that it says, and they said Cornelius, a centurion, a just man, and one who Fears God. Fear God. I believe one of the reasons why it is so easy to sin is the lack of fear and reverence for Almighty God. And through a passage of scripture, anyone who fears God does not sin against him. And anyone who fears God, God always blesses them. Because it pleases him. Fear means that you will think twice before you do anything that is in disobedience. Fear means that you tremble at even the very thought of sinning or offending Almighty God. Fear, the fear and reverence of God. And it is one of those things because of this preaching of love and grace of God, but never speak, they never preach on the justice of God, that God is a just God and God is a holy God. 
and that he will simply take you out and even if he does not take you out he will make you suffer afflictions to break you to a place of humility to make you realize that I could have taken you out, but because of my love, I'm teaching you a lesson here. Because the Bible says, who he love, he chastens. He will break you. He will strip you. Till you come to the point to realize on him and him alone, you must depend on and have faith in knowing that without him, you will not make it into the kingdom of heaven, beloved. So, we must pray if we realize that we are having problems in the area of sin. If someone can walk up to you and entice you easily, that you will go and sin against Almighty God because you, that pull that they have upon you, that impact or influence they have upon you, make you in that moment shift your energy and shift your forces and shift your heart so much so that you got to go easily sin against God and then come back and repent and ask for forgiveness. Beloved, that means that you are a slave and a servant to that spirit more than the spirit of living God. You make God jealous and it will cost you. It will cost you in a way wherein God sometimes because of the anointing on you, it will not mess with you. But hear this now. It will mess with those of your generation down the line. It will be your children or your children's children will end up suffering because of this. They're going to cost. Could be things that you own. It's going to cost. God is just and God is holy. But the fear of, the, uh, the fear of God is one of those things, once you place your heart to, for, for it, you can, it's a gift from God. It also, you can pray for it. You can pray for it, beloved. Pray that God give you this gift of fearing him and reverence him because you love him so much and you want him to be a part of your life and you want him to lead and guide you and direct you so much so that you will not offend him and you want to live in that place of the fear and reverence of God because in this you are protected and God will bless your life. God is about to bless this man's life that he not just only talk to him is moving, his spirit is moving and shifting things in place so that Peter can get to him to bless him. May when God look upon your life today, beloved, and I pray that as you search your heart and ask yourself, who am I? That not only when you get an answer of yourself, if you see that there are things about you, when you ask yourself, who am I? That is not pleasing to God. You can pray. And pray with sincerity of heart and mind that God remove whatever you see that is a manifestation or daily manifestation of your life. Remove those things from you. So that even when others talk about you, they don't just call your name. They can say Cornelius or so-and-so, a person who is such and such and such and such and such. They can name a list of the things that they see about your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Those close to you, the guards who was close to him, around him 24-7, sees his life that they can, they can easily tell Peter. <clears throat> Not only that Cornelius, this, you know, powerful man of authority and power, but Cornelius, a man who is just and fear God. Not just any God now, but the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This one true God, whom Peter can relate to. Him. Him. Search your heart today, beloved, and ask yourself a question. Who are you? Who does men say you are? Because people are only going to speak about what they see about you. Especially those who are daily around you. What will your wife say about you? What will a, can a husband say about a wife? What will your children say about you? Those things are very important. It speaks volume. This man, his reputation, 
this character it speaks volume about him and God is about to bless him because of this he is just and he fears God may God bless you today beloved as you walk in the fear and in the righteousness of Almighty God don't look to your right don't look to your left but look unto him the author and finisher of our faith Jesus Christ and by the power and guidance of his Holy Spirit who in the Spirit walk in the Spirit and may God open the spiritual eyes and ears so that you live a life that is just and reverential to unto him in the name of Jesus Christ I pray have a blessed day beloved amen